The first virgin birth given by a mouse took place in 2004. This was an extraordinary event because mammals like mice and us humans do not give a virgin birth. We'll come back to the mouse giving virgin birth a bit later. Although we humans can't give a virgin birth, we have told stories of miraculous births where no fertilization has taken place. Ironically, this mode of reproduction is widespread in the animal kingdom, and us humans, among other mammals, are pretty much the only animal class not capable of giving virgin birth. The scientific term for virgin birth is parthenogenesis, derived from the Greek words virgin birth. It is found in insects, earthworms, and many other life forms. It's rarely seen in vertebrates, like reptiles as well, but never in mammals. There are advantages to reproduction without mating. It can be a quicker way to grow a population, and if there are no mates around, the mother can still pass her genetic information on. But sexual reproduction is a lot more common and pretty darn effective. We humans have populated the Earth thoroughly without virgin birth. But why do we use sexual reproduction and not parthenogenesis? If the morning gecko can give virgin birth, why can't we? We humans, like most animals, have two copies of our genome. Our genome is split into chromosomes and we get one copy of chromosomes from our mother's egg and one copy of chromosomes from our father's sperm. The chromosomes from the mother's side are the maternal chromosomes, and the chromosomes from the father's side are the paternal chromosomes. We have to get one copy of maternal and one copy of paternal chromosomes, otherwise we don't develop. Most parthenogenetically reproducing species also need two copies of their chromosomes, but for them it's okay if all their chromosomes are maternal. For example, some honeybees give virgin birth and the offspring develop just fine with just the DNA from the mother. Interestingly, in rare cases, some sexually reproducing species can reproduce parthenogenetically as well. For example, there have been reports of virgin births in sharks and snakes, but this is an exception and it never happens in mammals. Mammals have to have chromosomes from both parents. This has been confirmed in a mammalian model organism, the mouse. In the 80s, experiments were conducted in the labs of Davor Salter and Azim Surani, where genomes from two female mouse eggs were combined to make an embryo. This embryo was then transplanted to a female mouse to grow. The embryo did not develop normally and didn't produce living offspring. The experiment was also done the other way around. The female egg had its DNA removed, and in its place the DNA from two male mouse sperm was added. This didn't produce a normally developing embryo either. The DNA code on the paternal chromosome is the same as the DNA code on the maternal chromosome. Why then, in mammals, can't just maternal chromosomes make a healthy embryo like in some honeybees? Why do we humans need to find a partner to pass our genes on to a new being? The phenomenon is due to epigenetic marks on the chromosomes. Epigenetic marks are modifications of DNA. They don't change the DNA code itself, but they usually limit how much of a gene is being expressed. The epigenetic marks are a code added on top of the DNA code. In mammals, a special epigenetic phenomenon takes place. It's called genomic imprinting. In genomic imprinting, the eggs and the sperm get different epigenetic marks imprinted on their chromosomes as they develop. After fertilization, when the eggs and the sperm have joined to make a single cell, the imprinted marks stay on the chromosomes. The embryo knows which chromosomes are maternal and which are paternal. The DNA is marked for a reason. These epigenetic marks change how a subset of genes is expressed. Most genes are used equally by the embryo. Both versions of the gene, the paternal and the maternal, are equally expressed. In imprinted genes, this balance is broken, and one version of the gene is strongly expressed, whereas the other is silenced. Imprinted genes make up a minority of genes. Still, this minority of imprinted genes creates an imbalance in gene expression that makes both sets of parental chromosomes necessary for the development of the embryo in mammals. 
Let's take an example. In mice, the IGF2 gene stimulates embryonic growth by allowing more nutrients to flow to the embryo through the placenta. The IGF2 gene has similar effects in humans. Imprinting of a control region near IGF2 gene makes the paternal IGF2 gene strongly expressed, whereas the maternal gene is silenced by this control region. There is a balance in protein production. When the embryo gets copies of chromosomes from both parents, the right amount of IGF2 protein is produced. The imbalance is not due to differences in DNA code, as the DNA code is the same in the paternal and the maternal chromosomes. It's the epigenetic code imprinted on the chromosomes that differs between the parents, making IGF2 strongly expressed on the paternal chromosome while significantly reducing its expression on the maternal chromosome. This system of imbalanced gene expression seems to complicate things and make virgin birth impossible. So why has imprinting evolved in mammals? There are a few different theories. The most well-known theory is called the kinship theory. According to the kinship theory, the paternal genes and the maternal genes have a somewhat conflicting interests for the development of the fetus. The fetus develops inside the mother and gets its nutrients from the mother. But half of the fetus's genes come from the father. The mother is equally related to all its offspring, but the father may not be, since the mother can have offspring with other males as well. Because of this, it's in the paternal gene's interest to maximize the resources for the fetus, even at a cost to the mother and the mother's other offspring. The paternal genes drive the growth of the fetus, whereas the maternal genes restrict the growth in order to distribute nutrients to all offspring. The IGF2 gene is an excellent example of this. It is expressed from the paternal chromosome, driving growth, and its expression is silenced on the maternal chromosome. The imprinting of mammalian genes affects development dramatically, as we saw from the mouse experiments in which DNA only from the mother or father was combined to make an embryo. These embryos did not make it. But it's important to remember that although the genes coming from the different parents may be at a conflict, mostly they work towards the same goal. They work towards growing a healthy fetus. Pushing the fetus to get too much or too little nutrients would jeopardize its life. Now we come back to the mouse that gave virgin birth in 2004. In the study conducted by Tomohiro Kono and colleagues, two maternal mouse genomes were combined to make an embryo. This should not produce an embryo that can survive. But what made this experiment unique was that one of the maternal chromosomes came from a mouse mutant that had a part of its chromosome missing. The part it was missing was the IGF2 gene control region that suppresses the production of the IGF2 protein from the maternal chromosome. Imprinting marks usually shut down a gene, and this control region is imprinted in the father. This paternal imprint blocks the effect of the control region, and the IGF2 protein is produced. When this control region was deleted, the IGF2 gene was expressed strongly on the maternal chromosome of the mutant mouse. With the control region deleted, the mutant chromosome acted like the imprinted paternal version, producing the IGF2 protein. The researchers had turned one of the female mouse chromosomes to resemble that of a male mouse. This made the embryo survive. The mouse that was born the virgin birth lived to adulthood and produced offspring. The experiments didn't really count as parthenogenesis, since chromosomes from two different female mice were used. But nonetheless, no father was needed. A barrier in mammals had been crossed, and virgin birth happened. In mice, it was surprisingly easy to overcome the barriers of imprinting. Maybe something similar could be done in humans. But we humans have probably invaded this planet enough without access to virgin birth. Besides, let's not start a new religion. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment, and share the message of this channel. Lots of hours go into making these videos, so I hope as many people can see them as possible. See you next time!